G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Continuing a series I'm doing right up into the draft where I do individual short videos on some of the top prospects in this year's draft. If you wanna see other videos from this series in the top right corner of this video, if you click it, you'll find a link to an entire playlist. And so far, I've done Bo Allen. Today, I am doing Toby Trevalia. If you wanna keep up with this series as we get closer to the draft, make sure you subscribe. And PS, members of this YouTube channel will see these videos well in advance. All right, let's talk about Toby Trevalia. Now, he is one of the more intriguing prospects in this year's draft because like a couple of other players in his range, it's interesting to project what sort of player he will be at the next level. Primarily right now, he's a pretty competitive, rugged defender. At the very bare bones of it, what you've got is a competitive, intercepting player with great running ability, great closing speed, offers great run and carry, really takes the game on. And while right now he's primarily a running defender, there is some scope for him to become a midfielder at the next level or at least a wingman. So despite the fact that he's got some weapons, he takes the game on, like I said, his run and carry and overlap that he provides is really strong. Unlike some other defenders with these attributes, he is actually still a very, very good one-on-one -on -one player. So while he's far from proven as being a future potential inside midfielder, despite the fact that he's lightly framed, his contested game is pretty strong and he has, you know, sort of played above his weight to some extent and being the competitive player that he is, it gives you that scope to be certainly up to the task of playing as an inside midfielder at the next level. But obviously a little bit more goes into being an inside mid, namely things like being able to read the play in a stopper situation in real time. But he's a fairly well-decorated prospect. He had earned all Australian honors this year. He made a VFL appearance for Carlton and he's another one of those prospects who really took their game to the next level this season. In terms of athletic testing, he had a good draft combine. He came second in the 2KM time trial, completing the endurance test in 6 minutes and 13 seconds. So once again, this kind of validates something we already knew about Travalia. He's got great running capacity, which serves him well for being both a running defender and a midfielder at the next level. So to summarize his strengths, we talked about his competitiveness, his defensive pressure, like I said, really good closing speed. He's got great endurance, so he's a really good athletic prospect. His speed and ability to intercept is really strong, and generally his work rate really rounds him out. And there's some really strong football IQ in terms of like knowing where to locate himself in the defensive 50 as well. So even if he's not necessarily marking or influencing the contest, he's still standing in the right spots. A couple of things I've seen him picked up for in terms of weaknesses. First of all, one of them is size. He's just lightly built. So I don't know if that's going to be a problem at the next level when you foresee realistically he's going to put on that size at AFL level. And the fact that he's been able to play above his weight to this point is actually a strength in itself. I suppose the extent to which he is able to build his body will influence the rate he can become an inside midfield. If he's one of those guys genetically who doesn't really bulk up, then maybe he just stays a predominantly outside leaning midfielder. But there's tons of good skinny outside midfielders in the modern game. Another one is disposal efficiency. This is an interesting one because, you know, in terms of the actual technique of his kicks, I think he's quite technically proficient and he does take the game on. And I think sometimes maybe that decision making and his ability to forecast like the depth of his kicks, what's, what's the right depth, that can sometimes hold him back without it necessarily being a flaw in his kicking action. And that quality of kicking action is, is important. When you're a young talent, that's the time to try and perfect it. Thankfully for Toby, I don't think that's particularly a problem. It's just sometimes the way he weights his kicks and he is an aggressive ball user, it doesn't always come off. It actually reminds me a little bit of Liam Duggan at West Coast, who technically is a good kick. The ball moves at a good velocity, but sometimes it'll just fall short or go over the top of the play he's kicking to. But thankfully over time, as he gets more composed, experienced, that is easier to rectify than necessarily a bad ball drop, for instance. There's also the question of whether he becomes a midfielder at the next level, and that's just something that we can't answer right now. I've seen a lot of play comparisons to someone like a Will Day. Uh, Will Day is a great success story of Hawthorne plucking a kid probably a little bit earlier in that draft than most expected, but they took a chance on him as a good running rebounding defender with the ability to transition to the midfield, and there is a lot of similarity to Travalia there. In Will Day's case, he did become a very good midfielder. In Travalia's case, we obviously don't know that yet. And there isn't a lot of data to go off for me to make a projection on whether he does or not. But at the end of the day, I still feel like there's low bustability. I don't know if I've made that up. Bustability. Has, has, have you heard that word before? I think it's a good phrase. And what I'm trying to convey is that I just don't think there's too much risk of Travalia not being a good footballer. He just might be more of a defender first who can maybe push up onto a wing at worst. At his best, he could become a very, very good midfielder with genuine weapons. So where is his draft range? Uh, this will be interesting. Again, uh, similar to Bo Allen, I think that the range is quite similar. Some are suggesting potentially a top 10 pick. And if he does go in the top 10, 
I'd imagine, like Bo Allen, as it currently stands, he'll probably come into calculations at St Kilda's two picks. I expect one of them to be used on a genuine midfielder at the Saints, and then they could potentially couple that selection with someone like a Trevalier to diversify that, because then if he becomes a midfielder, he'll probably be different to the style of midfielder they've already drafted, looking at this current draft ranking. I suppose you could apply that same logic to someone like a Richmond if they hold pick six. At the time I record this, they currently hold pick six. Many people expect that to change, or at least it is a very live option as it currently stands. If the pick goes to North, I'm not sure they would spend their first pick on Toby Trevalier, but if Richmond were to hold that pick, it's possible. It is also very possible they go with a proven midfielder. What is the back end of his range? If we establish that the, the start of his range is probably pick six, seven, or eight, once again, it's hard to see him sliding out of the top 15 altogether. I think West Coast are a club that has been linked to him, and they will hold what should become pick 15 on the night. Now, I did say the same thing about Bo Allen. If Bo Allen's also available, maybe West Coast go local there, but it's unlikely that they'll both be available looking at the the current draft ranking. So I'd say 8 to 15 is a fair range for Travalia. And if you ask me to guess, I'd say he probably gets taken in the first 11 or 12 picks. Given Richmond hold so many picks in that range, it's probably more likely to be Richmond than anyone else. That is also true of many draftees in this range. But again, applying that same logic as I did with Bo Allen, the fact that there's three teams holding multiple picks in this range, you've got Melbourne, St Kilda, and Richmond. Assuming each of those clubs prioritize midfielders with their first picks, someone like a Trevalier could come in to offset that really well. There you have it, guys. That is my take on Toby Trevalier. Let me know in the comments what you think of him as a prospect. Certainly open to your feedback on this particular format. And of course, in the comments below, let me know who you want me to do next in this series. I already know who it's going to be next. It's going to be Xavier Lindsay. So keep an eye out for that on the channel. Members, you can probably already see that video. But let me know who you want me to do next in this series, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.